All right, it's Feel Good Friday, Michael Holly. But uh, you and I both uh, feeling pretty down, uh, heartbroken right now. And uh, we're going to start the show on a sad note. Um, got the news earlier today of the uh, tragic uh, passing of, of David Patton, uh, three-time Super Bowl winning wide receiver for the New England Patriots. Uh, he died on Thursday. Uh, in a motorcycle accident in, uh, in his home state of South Carolina. Um, and, and that one hits close to home for us uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, one, 47 years old, um, older than me, younger than you. It's always just, you know, you get to a certain age, not that death at any point uh, is easy to accept, but you get to this certain age and it's like, man, it's like people that are your age that feel like there's so much ahead of them dying, especially in this time that we're living in right now with this, uh, this global pandemic, but a uh, motorcycle accident took David Patton. And he's somebody who uh, Michael and I both got a chance to know uh, covering the Patriots. Uh, and Michael, for both of us, um, <laughs> great character, great person to interview. Uh, yeah. Had an incredible right. 2001 season in particular. I could I can remember that Colts game like it was yesterday. Everybody has seen the Super Bowl uh, catch the only offensive touchdown for the Patriots in Super Bowl 36. Tom Brady's first career postseason touchdown pass uh, in the Super Bowl uh, against the Rams in the Superdome. Uh, in Double January move. To, or February, excuse Double me, move. 2002. Great, yeah. great catch. Right they, went the to the, they went to the replay on great it. Great catch. They went to the replay on it. Went to the replay, uh, both feet down. The, um, Yep, put put the Patriots up fourteen to three, uh, going into yep. uh, going into halftime, um, but right before halftime. And then he called Great one, play. awesome. In the AFC Championship game as well, um, but I was going to say both of us, Michael, owe owe quite a bit of debt to this man, because both our lives and careers uh, would not be what they are, dare I say, uh, had we not. Uh, been along for that ride in, in the beginning of that Patriots dynasty, you know, and, and it goes for a lot of players, but and Patton is one of them, but just obviously we all know you've written four books about the Patriots. Um, you know, my work got had a lot more eyes on it. I got a lot more credibility covering the NFL early in my career because I was fortunate enough to start my career covering the New England Patriots, but not to make it all about us. That's more of a, that's more a, a, a how he touched our lives directly, but really yeah, yeah, uh, the right. world lost a good man and, and the NFL in particular, the, the New England Patriots organization is in mourning because David Patton was legitimately a good dude, a minister, uh, a devout Christian and a good dude. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you see that that uh, tweet there from Scott Pioli and Charlie Weiss and others. And that's why I say thank you, David Patton. Uh, yes, you say uh, your your life changed, your career uh, trajectory changed, so did mine, because of guys like David Patton. And he was very special to me, not only for the man that he was and, and the entertaining interviews that he gave and the spirit that he always had. I always think of David Patton in that huge smile, even if he was correcting you or even if he mm -hmm. was uh, arguing with you, he was able to argue with you while smiling, which is pretty amazing. But that group... He did. Uh, that 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 group that first uh, championship team Super Bowl 36 for the Patriots they beat the Rams. Uh, it was full of players who who forced not just us covering the Patriots, but really the NFL really changed the conversation in the NFL. I know you don't remember this conversation we had with with Don Shula the night after or the morning after the Patriots beat the Rams uh, right there in New Orleans. I think it was the Marriott. One of so one of these hotels. Rec, uh, no, I re place. no, I remember this. I remember the Shula conversation. I don't remember okay, the Belichick. Okay, you don't remember the Belichick part. All right. Yeah, so, I remember the Shula, Shula one. Yeah. I remember remember that. Shula was right behind. We were having breakfast, and Shula was right behind us. Having breakfast, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Rest in peace, Don Shula. Don Shula was uh, he, he he was pretty involved. I mean, he was uh, he, he he really really enjoyed watching football and, and getting into the dynamics of how a game was won or lost. And I remember him saying after that, he said, man, they won the Super Bowl with a bunch of waiver wire guys. And 
the, the, the truth is, okay, not a lot of waiver wires, but a lot of free agents, a lot of guys who really were not highly regarded in other places. David Patton was one of those guys. I think the Patriots got him from the Browns. He didn't work out with the Browns. And remember, yep. the Browns had just returned yep. to Cleveland. Browns, they were not very good. Giants. Yeah. Giants before that. Right. And remember, he started off in the Arena League. Undrafted guy who went through the Arena League took the long route to get to so he was representative to to New England. He was representative uh, along with many others of, of the spirit of that team. David Patton, uh, Larry Izzo, Antoine Smith was cut from Buffalo and the Patriots picked him up. Mike Vrabel couldn't get any time in Pittsburgh and the Patriots uh, uh, rolled with him. Uh, you know, Mike Compton uh, was uh, kind of lightly regarded. And he was their center and their guard. Uh, he was their center when Damian Woody couldn't shotgun snap, and he was their guard when they were running the ball. <laughs> I mean, they just had a lot of guys on that team yeah. who other uh, who, who felt like guys felt like, hey, they're not paying attention to us, so we're going to make it happen in New England. So he is a huge, yeah. huge part of the Patriots' history. And a big part of, of Tom Brady's success, too. That's ex that's exactly right. I mean, the, he helped author NFL history. You know, if, if, if that season, and I mentioned that Colts game. I mean, I remember, um, you know, he, he ran for a touchdown, threw a touchdown, caught a touchdown. And, and at the time, nobody had done that since Walter Payton, like 20 years before. This is back in 2001. Um, but if... if, if we all know about what Vinatieri did in the postseason, but if, if something goes differently throughout the season, who's to say what Brady's career becomes? You know, who's to say how NFL history unfolds from that moment on over the last two decades? Um, you know, I remember, again, this was my first year out of college, 01, covering that team. I remember going to South Carolina. I, I believe, I, I think it was Columbia I went to, South Carolina to do a, a takeout, to do a feature on um, David Patton. Squar sent me to South Carolina. To do a profile of might have been off of that, that Colts game as we were trying to, to, to get to know more about these characters that you're building and, and that word character over the years, Michael, um, it's gotten somewhat watered down. You and I both know that organizations, they, they distinguish between personal character and football character. You know, that football character is do you show up on time? Right, is right. football the most important thing to you? Are you dependable right. in the right. locker room? So on and so forth. Your personal character, what you do with your family, what you do in your free time, and as long as it doesn't compromise your availability, we don't really care about that. Yeah. But David Patton was a man that checked both boxes. And at the time, given the types of people that the Patriots had accumulated, like you like you just ran down, that character conversation was 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 front and center trying to figure out how this group of ragtag individuals came together to pull off one of the greatest upsets in NFL history. And David Patton, his character, both uh, in the locker room, on the field, uh, but also as a man, is what people are really remembering. I mean, so he had some great highlight plays, but he was really a highlight for a lot of his teammates and a lot of people who got a chance to cross paths with him. I want to read uh, specifically Bill Belichick's and Robert Kraft's statements because they were very poignant, uh, very personal. And you can tell just by reading it, um, reading them, uh, that it hit them pretty hard. Uh, you know, out of all the players that they've coached, David Patton uh, seems to definitely have stood out. So this is Belichick. I'm heartbroken to hear of David's tragic passing at such a young age. I'm grateful to have coached David. He is an essential person and player in Patriots history without whom we would not have been Super Bowl champions. I especially appreciate David for his professional journey. As much as anyone, David epitomized the unheralded self-made player who defied enormous odds to not only earn a job in the NFL, but to become a key player on multiple championship teams. I can speak for anyone who had the pleasure to be around David that his work ethic, positive energy, and character were elite. My deepest condolences are with his family and loved ones. And then Robert Kraft uh, went on to say the following. I'm heartbroken by the news of David's passing. He was a devout Christian who followed his passion following his football career and founded his own ministry. Michael, I didn't know that. Uh, David transitioned from an yeah. undersized and understated wide receiver to a powerful and passionate preacher. No surprise. Uh, in New England, he will always be remembered as a three-time Super Bowl champion. His touchdown reception in the AFC Championship game at Pittsburgh propelled the Patriots to Super Bowl 36, and I'll never forget his remarkable catch in the back of the end zone in that game. It was our only offensive touchdown in the Super Bowl 
and secured our first championship in franchise history. Our sincerest sympathies are with his wife, uh, Galeana, uh, his family, and all who are mourning David's tragic and untimely death. So I, didn't, I don't know about you. I, I lost track of, of David. I didn't know he went on to become a preacher, but that doesn't surprise me yeah. at all, as, as we talked about. Yeah. He was always a minister uh, in that locker room, first yeah. in Foxborough, and eventually when they moved to Foxborough Stadium, excuse me, and then when they moved to Gillette Stadium. Yeah, and he was uh, along with some other guys on that team who would really uh, who, who were preachers official and unofficial David Patton was one of them on offense on defense. Uh, they had a guy they called him Moses uh, because he was so because his words Anthony Pleasant. Uh, resonated so quickly Anthony Pleasant in right? the locker room and that was Anthony Pleasant. And so uh, he was yeah. a part of that uh, 2001 team as well. Roman Pfeiffer. Uh, another guy in the linebacking crew on that team, yeah. Terrell Buckley. We were just Buckley talking Jones. about. I mean, just a, Troy Brown. Yeah. Was that yesterday? We're just about what? Look at Troy Brown, Troy Brown coaching. You know, Troy Brown yesterday. Yeah. So uh, yes, uh, thank you, thank you, David Patton, for as you can see, you know, all the memories too. It's not not just the the impact, you know, on the field substantial impact on the field three time champion. A lot of people forget about that. It's not like, oh, he was just there in 01 in 02. They were they, they got off to an, uh, a nice little start. They were three and O and I remember him talking to Tom Brady on the field before they played San Diego and he said to Brady, hey man, we're gonna go undefeated this year. No, no, Brady said to him, we're gonna go undefeated this year <laughs> because that was one of his favorite <laughs> receivers. Patton was and obviously that didn't happen, yeah, but they had a lot of time together. And he was reliable. Like, look, if you're if you're one of Brady's reliable receivers, uh, that's a high compliment. You're doing something right. He did something right yeah. for many years, and then he uh, finally he was rewarded with uh, in 2005. You know, he was coming up on free agency after 04, 2005. He got a nice contract from Washington, more than the Patriots wanted to pay, wanted to pay. But he was able to get that big payday that, that he deserved. So, uh, thank you, David Patton, for yeah. for your work on the field and I'm telling you, man, we would. We we might not be here. I mean, I'm sure you'd have gone on to do great things. I, I like to think I would have as well. Mm-hmm. But our, again, that, that word trajectory, All, a lot of people, and, and I know I speak for a lot of people in media, a lot of people owe, uh, from the New England area, uh, owe their careers, New England and beyond, owe, their, owe a lot of their careers to being a part. It's no different than the Niners of the 80s, how, you know, talk about coaching trees and, 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 and people in organizations who go on and have great careers elsewhere because people want to be a part of it. Same in media. If you got the opportunity to be around the 90s Bulls, you know, or the 2000s Lakers or, or, or the Patriots or whatever, it, it gives you a different type of profile. You know what I mean? And a different type of credibility. People are reading and listening and watching you, um, you know, and for us being and other members of the media being around the Patriots and this and the and, Greatest dynasty in NFL history, it, it changed our lives. I mean, you know, again, Michael, I, I'm out of college. Less than a year after leaving Loyola, New Orleans, I'm back in the Superdome, sitting next to you, watching the Patriots win the Super Bowl. The morning of which you wrote the column, having spent the previous evening with Bill Belichick. I think you've told the story before. Having spent the previous evening with Bill Belichick, and he laid out what the game plan was going to be to upset the Rams in 36. So that was one. And you started working on the book next year. And then they won it again with Patton as part of the team in 03. Okay. And Patriot Rain was born. So again, he made you a rich man. He helped make you a rich man. <laughs> it's just it's just crazy <laughs> to think of the impact that reverberates yeah. as a result that, that the ripple effect that people like David Patton and many others obviously had on just these two dudes that's sitting here talking on zoom every day before yeah. we go to break. Oh, you, you rich in, to add rich in spirit. Rich in spirit. Yes, rich in spirit. It's, no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. You try to put your business out there just, uh, before we go to break. Let, let, just let want me, to tie another record. story together. <laughs> yeah, and this happened while uh, this happened a while back. Um, but today, the uh, the Broncos, uh, one of the many teams that uh, it's kind of a related story. That's why I want to you know shout out the Broncos and what they're doing. Uh, one of the many teams that a longtime uh, offensive assistant coach uh, Greg Knapp uh, served with. Uh, today, every Broncos coach, uh, personnel staff, football support staff member. This is according to Adam Schefter, building bicycles for underprivileged children to honor the memory of 
Greg Knapp. He was a cyclist uh, who was killed in a, an accident when a car hit him back on July 22nd. Uh, he was just about to get started with the Jets. Uh, definitely made his way around to a lot of quarterbacks over the years. Uh, Atlanta, Oakland, Denver, San Francisco. Just This was a long-time assistant coach who, like David Patton, uh, nobody seems to have a bad word to say about him. So rest in peace That's to Greg right. Knapp. Rest in peace to uh, to to Greg uh, to David Patton, and from both the Michaels. You, remember, you if we saw him today, he'd give us that big smile. I'd be like, "Hey!" I mean, like we, we spent many a time running up on this dude at his locker, asking him questions. He was so accommodating and so thoughtful. Uh, rest in heaven, uh, rest in peace, and rest in power, David Patton. All right, uh, we'll pick up the rest of the show uh, on the other side. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.